Hello, good evening. Thank you for joining me again. It seems to me that an ever-increasing number of people are becoming interested in their own family history. My husband is one of those people, and because of this interest, we currently have an incredibly large and detailed family tree poster adorning the back of one of the doors in our house. If you study it, you notice that there are some names that come up over and over again. It can be very difficult to sort out all the Johns and Williams from one another. But there are some names that only come up once, possibly with good reason. One of the names that always jumps out at me from the family tree is a biblical name, Onesiphorus. Like I said, there may be good reason why some names only come up once. But the fact that it appears in the family tree has given me a bit of an interest in the person in the Bible who had that name. Onesiphorus only gets one brief mention in the Bible, but actually he's like so many other people right now who are quietly working away in the background, trying to make life better for other people. So this is his story with a little bit of added imagination. Paul was in prison. He had been in Rome telling people the good news of Jesus, and as had happened so often before, not everyone was happy about what he was saying. And so now, despite the fact that Paul was a Roman citizen, he was in a prison cell, chained to the wall and feeling deserted and alone. Then, all of a sudden, the door of the cell opens. Paul looks up, but because of the light that's coming with the open door, he struggles to see who is there and what's going on. The door closes again, and in the semi-darkness to which his eyes have become more accustomed, Paul thinks he recognises the new figure standing before him. Onesiphorus, he says. What are you doing here? Why are you in Rome? By way of an answer, Paul hears his name spoken in love and feels a pair of strong arms wrapped around him. I came to look for you, says a voice that Paul loves. Onesiphorus goes on to explain that he has been in Rome looking for Paul, that he has searched almost every prison in the city, and there are many of them, and he is so thankful to have finally found his friend. Onesiphorus produces food and drink, which Paul takes hungrily. This is not a place where one can expect to be well looked after. And they talk. They share stories of the places that they've been together, and they talk of the grace and goodness of God in their lives. Onesiphorus is not allowed to stay long, and soon the guards come back to take him away and to lock Paul into his solitary darkness once more. But now Paul feels different. His friend may not be able to rescue him from prison. He cannot take him away from this present suffering. But simply the fact of his coming means Paul feels stronger, refreshed to continue with life as it is for him at the moment. It's great, isn't it? Having the sort of friend who'll give you a boost when you're a bit down. I have a few and I've been deeply grateful to them, especially in the last few months. I think maybe one of the things a lot of us have learnt during lockdown is a greater awareness of the importance of other people in our lives. It's going to be great when we can get out there once again and give all those people that we love and value a hug again. But in the meantime, we can give thanks to God for those people. And maybe if we haven't already, we could even tell those people themselves how important they are to us. So as ever, I'm going to finish with a prayer. And if you would like to make it your prayer, feel free to stick an amen in the comments or just say one to yourself. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for those people who you put into our lives that are there to give us a boost when things are rough. Bless them even as you bless us through them. And help us also to be people who refresh others through our words and our actions. Amen. Thank you for joining me. See you again tomorrow, I hope. Bye for now.